Today I have with me Dr. Alexandra Philipson. She is the professor at the University Hospital in Bonn, Germany, the director of psychiatry and psychotherapy. In 1998, she got her doctorate in neuropediatrics and in 2009 completed her habilitation on, pardon me, etiology, diagnostic and treatment of adult ADHD. Good Abend. <laughs> Good evening. Guten Abend. <laughs> How are you doing today? Oh, I would say, okay, a lot of things to do before Christmas, you know, working in a university hospital for psychiatry. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Interesting. So interesting. You mentioned that today we're going to discuss DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, which is uh, a different form of group therapy mixed uh, that has CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. And based on Dr. Ram Russ Ramsey's um Re recollections you're the expert on adult adhd and dbt and i wanted to talk to you about that and the benefits and the differences so that the listeners can get an understanding of it because i had great success when i went through it during my journey with the the treatment of adhd and getting to really you know gain the skills and i i really like you to discuss that a bit more so um, maybe introduce yourself a little bit, give a brief background where you are, and, uh, and then go straight into what DBT is. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for your introduction and for the invitation to talk on DBT um, for adults with ADHD. So my name is Alexandra Philipson. I'm uh, the head of the Department for Psychiatry and Psychotherapy at the University of Bonn since wow, 2018 now. And before that, I worked a very long time at the university hospital um, uh, at the University of Freiburg in the very south of Germany. And there we started, I would say, 20 years ago or 24, 23 years ago <laughs> <laughs> um, to diagnose primarily borderline personality disorder, but also very early then, very early for Germany, adult ADHD. And in these times, we recognize that there's a lot of overlap between those two patient groups, I, I would say. So borderline personality disorder and adult ADHD. And there we started to diagnose both. And we also started to develop a group program, as you already said, much based on dialectic behavior therapy and tailored, in our opinion, <laughs> um, for adults with ADHD. And well, I'm also a supervisor for DBT and for CBT. So maybe that's important to know. And you asked me for the difference between cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical behavioral therapy. And well, it's clear that DBT is also kind of CBT because it includes a lot of cognitive elements, but it adds, and this was primarily based on the hypothesis or the theory of Marsha Linehan, much on validation strategies, acceptance strategies, not only for the patients, but also or participants, but also for the medical doctors and also for the psychotherapists. So that means you always have a fine-tuned balance between acceptance regarding your attitude and change and also regarding the skills you use and you teach. I think this is the main difference, I would say. And I will agree with that completely because I did CBT first. Mm. And when I was talking with Russ, you know, it was more for depression, which didn't really work with me, but I still felt guilty for having my emotions. While when we start getting into DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, it was, hey, those are true feelings. You're okay to feel those. So the, when you said validation and acceptance of it, that's the big, that was the big savior for me. It's like, now I got validation that I am okay to feel like this, but what do I do after is what I learned. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, it's very well explained. To accept emotions, to get to know emotions, and then to be able to cope, to regulate emotions. So I would say the first step to change something is to accept it. So, and I think that's very special in DBT. It's also a little bit in acceptance and commitment therapy. 
but there you don't have such a skills training. So that's really typical for DBT. And um, also to integrate emotional regulation strategies and skills is typical for DBT. And also to integrate mindfulness. Not only mindfulness, you know, meditating all the time, but to integrate mindfulness more in a nutshell. Be more present is be, what I got out of it. Be more present, non-judgmental. And as you uh, already said, feeling guilty, I'm too lazy, I should do more, uh, and so on and so on. So that's being mindful, being in the present, and being non-judgmental. Now that's very tough for a lot of us. That's been very judgmental about ourselves for many decades. Absolutely. Because people told you and because of, well, well, you know, ADHD, there are also a lot of strengths, you know, mm -hmm. and positive and resources and so on. But of course, there are also these, well, negative schema and, and, and yeah, feeling you don't, you don't reach your goals, feeling lazy and so on. Yeah. No, especially when you're in an environment that completely and constantly reminds you that you're not doing well, and you're not good at doing because you're not doing it the yeah. way you're supposed to. Um, so there's four core components, correct, to DBT? Yes. Uh, one is mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So it's focused on accepting and be present in the current moment. Distress tolerance. Mm -hmm. That's where that really hit me because I was never comfortable with the distress. I, I, I wouldn't tolerate it uh, with time. So they built skills to tolerate painful events and emotions. And I really like the word there, painful, because that's how it mm -hmm. felt to me a lot of times. And that mm -hmm. was never validated. And the third one is emotion regulation. So managing intense emotions that are causing you problems and those around you. And then four was actually, the, I really like this one, was interpersonal effectiveness skills. So how to communicate in assertive ways for yourself, maintain self-respect, and also strengthening the right relationships. Mm -hmm. Like if you can have people there and are not there for you, that's not the right mm -hmm. relationship, but the people who mm -hmm. want to respect you will, you know, I really liked about how to be assertive and be okay with that. Uh, CBT for me was only a few months. DBT was a year. Is that common mm -hmm. for DBT therapy? That's common. And, and sometimes even you have more time. So the classical DBT, you know, is uh, individual therapy combined with skills training. So this was the well, original DBT for patients with borderline, but then mm -hmm. we adapted it. But it was also because of there were a lot of patients seeking for help and asking for treatment. And this was the reason why we said, okay, let's try a group from it. So, and indeed it, it's it's one year with intensive and an intensive treatment period over a period of three months. And then with monthly sessions over a period of one year. But of course it's, you, well, you can be flexible there. Mm -hmm. But I think, yes, one year, it should be one year because you know it's not so hard to get people with ADHD into treatment, but it's very challenging to keep them in treatment and uh, yeah. really uh, use your skills in your daily life. And um, yeah, well, to me, I needed the year um, for two, maybe a third one will pop in reasons, but the one was to go from hey, you're you're I'm validating your feelings. And you have to accept them as they are. That's not just a one or two month thing. That's some serious hard work to look and get over your anger of the past. That was my big thing. I actually told my therapist, I couldn't have done DBT a year before. I was too angry. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second part was to work on the skills that they were providing you. That took a lot of time and patience and trials. And then to get validated, oh, it didn't go well this week. That's fine. What went wrong? How can we do it differently? Mm -hmm. And that's not just something you can do in a couple of weeks. Like I'm still yeah. working on these skills. Like <laughs> it's a constant thing. Um, and we had a mix of group and then individual. So we actually, we were weekly. We had, I think we two and a half months off because of summer and Christmas. But every week we met as a group. Every week we met with the individual. Mm -hmm. And they were not really nice to me in a way. Like, I mean, they were placating. If you weren't doing your work, they would let you know you're not trying to do your work and your skills. Like, is that a common thing or a common philosophy of DBT training? <laughs> well, I would say 
DBT therapies work with reinforcement, positive reinforcement in maybe. No, I give you that. They do. Yes, it is positive. Yes, sir. We, so we applaud. Uh, we really reinforce you when you're doing yeah. your skills and do your homework. And on the other hand, DBT therapies are quite, I would say, well, they are clear, I would say. Mm -hmm. and they really confront you with consequences of your behavior. Right. So I would say that's the way we do it. So... Yeah, on and, an eye level, on an eye level, so. Right, no, no, and that's what I want the listeners to understand. Like, if you do get into DBT, you will get that pushback, but it's for the right reasons. Like I said, if we just decide to stop trying the skills and attending, we were out of the program. Like, if we didn't, they didn't want to work with us if we didn't want to work on ourselves. And that's yeah. the other thing, too, I find with any therapy, mental health, addictions, you need to do the work, and it's not easy. It rewards are great later, but it's not easy. And you got to be truly yeah. and honest with yourself. And that took me about three months to finally trust the group mm -hmm. and to trust the, um, the, the therapist in there. Mm -hmm. So it took me three months. Then I opened up and it took me another six months to start seeing mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I still had another two months after to start seeing this was worth mm -hmm. my time. Mm -hmm. Is that sound kind of, typical or is it, it really depends on the person of course it depends on the person but it's also typical <laughs> <laughs> so you know adhd is a genius and all people are individuals so that's clear but well i would say well dbt is a challenge for participants that's right and um all the homeworks the skills and so on all the commitments and all the things about you know um well, self-insurance behavior is not the case, but sometimes, but also this dysfunctional behavior things mm -hmm. and missing sessions things and so on and all the consequences, they are quite clear. But I think that's very good to really reach a goal when you're going through this DBT treatment. And we know in the meantime, we just will publish a paper next week in psychotherapy and psychosomatics, and we evaluated the use of the skills. So frequency of use of the skills and the outcome. And we, are, we are also able to show that well, mindfulness in sports was quite effective. And we also mm -hmm. were able to show that when you use your skills more frequently, you will have the better outcome. Correct. Practice. Yeah, of Practice. course you say that's correct, but it hasn't been shown before. In, oh, in the, I see what you, you know, mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we also, as a therapist, I would say, yes, clearly, clearly. Yeah. As a participant, you would say clearly, but now we are able to show that on the database. And and it, it's, it's so clear that using skills really training it's really using it in the daily life activities it brings you to a better outcome yeah and i think that's a great point to to that you made like the other thing too i had to do was set goals at the beginning of dbt training what are my goals what do i want out of it and i couldn't just make vague ones that's be very specific and then re reevaluate them every month or so to make sure that we're on the right track or if we needed more work on different things and but that kept the participation about me, not about someone else's goal. Um, and I think that was a big change. And they wouldn't let me off the hook. No, you're not, it's not specific enough. What do you want to work on? And that was hard for me because I had to be truly honest with myself that I'm, I wasn't really good with distress. I wasn't tolerating it or my emotional regulation was bad, even though I felt justified that everyone's crossing me. But to come to those admissions that I need work here, that's very tough for anyone, mm -hmm. but it's probably the best decision you can ever make is being true and honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. So setting goals is definitely important. And the one-on-one, -on -one, like I had another therapist told me, if you can't get a group, if you can't get a DBT uh, program that does the, the group and the personal at the same time to try and find one of those. Mm -hmm. I haven't done in the other program it was group only, but I highly recommend if we can get the group and interpersonal definitely there because I, you know, I don't think our group was really good with sharing, but it was more that one-on-one -on -one badgering. I call badgering quote unquote in a, in a fun way. Um, like for me, I'm a very direct person. So I need someone to be direct and just call mm -hmm. bullshit and just say, no, I don't accept that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, those it's very key, but the key is to be safe in there. Um, so why do you consider DBT an important part of the treatment plan for ADHD? Is it for all ADHD or is it 
maybe like in my case, I was diagnosed with some borderline personality uh, tendencies or traits. He never mm-hmm. completely said I had it. And I kind of believed that I had those traits, but that was because of my conditioning from the last 40 years. So is DBT a treatment for all ADHD people or for some, or what's your recommendation? Yeah, well, it's particularly effective and useful in people with the combined predominantly presentation. That's clear mm-hmm. because regarding impulsivity and um, emotion regulation, of course, also. And particular for those with these borderline traits, as you already mentioned. So there's a lot of overlap, you know, mm-hmm. between those two diagnoses. But also, I have to say, it is effective also for people only it could be very hard only suffer from inattention or attention regulation problems right because all these you know how to organize how to be mindful how to be present how to recognize that you're not distracted self-esteem communication and so on all these skills are also effective for those people but of course dbt was designed originally for people with this you know High expressed emotions and impulsivity. Right. And suicide uh, tendencies, correct? And suicide yeah. tendencies and addiction and so on and dysfunctional behavior and so on and interpersonal, you know, relationships and so on and all these, you know. Yeah. yeah? But um, also for other people with ADHD or ADD, um, it it is useful and it is effective. And we were not able to show that those without this um, impulsivity traits um, have a stronger benefit. We, we found a benefit for, for, for all people with ADHD or ADD. That's a good point about the high impulsivity. Yes. And now, but to be one, I think it's very important what you were, what you mentioned that you had the combined treatment. I think that's the best to get if you have individual sessions and mm-hmm. the group. I wouldn't say that the group treatment is enough. So we just in the study, we combined it. Yeah. Because you have to be very standardized and so on. It was the group treatment. With, with three individual sessions only. But of course, the more you can get, the better it is. And of course, it's better to have the individual sessions also because there you can really go in more deeper in all these you know, problems you have and really analyze with the behavior analysis, the dysfunctional behavior and so on, and really to work on an individual level. But of course, you can also work wonderful together in the group. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think one, what is also very important is that if you are doing DBT groups or skills groups, you have some commitments, how to interact and being non-judgmental and and um, full of acceptance, not only towards the participants, but also between the participants. Yes. Yeah. We had a lot of those. We practice our interpersonal effectiveness amongst themselves, ourselves. Yeah. And at the same time, um, when someone was being judgmental, it was called out. Yeah. But in a way, not to make me look bad if I was the one that made the judgment. Because in a lot of this stuff, I want the listeners to realize all this stuff that we worked on, mindfulness, distress, tolerance, emotional, re- especially the emotional regulation here. These are all habits we created with time to protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. I wasn't consciously being emotionally dysregulated when I was triggered, it was something from my past. It was there to protect me and not realizing there was a trigger or that my feelings were validated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I had to come out of bad habits is what I started seeing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of, we did the interpersonal interpersonal effectiveness at the end. Then I realized at the end was, Hey, I haven't been like this my whole life. I just lost my way for about Mm -hmm. five years. And I was always this type of person and I just found myself again. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's habits that we got to get out of. We're, we're, I don't, I, I, I guarantee it. All the listeners, you're never always this way. Life made it, the environment, um, it protects you. So we mm-hmm. just got, we had to learn new habits, but that's tough. That's very tough, especially with loved ones. Start when you realize you've been very harsh to your loved ones and you never realized it because they were triggering you without knowledge. The stuff that's a tough pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Any other points of DBT you think is important for the listeners to know? 
Because the big difference is that mindfulness part and the validation and the acceptance. And like you said, yes. attitude and change and skills. Yeah. And there's also large benefit for therapists learning DBT. <laughs> Some studies out there. Okay, so say because, more about that. Yeah, because you when you, well, you know, when I started as a young uh, resident, so I it was the first I learned was DBT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it was very hard, but I would say it was a good, good starting point because you just learn, but you try to implement this in my daily life activities, but still, but you just learn to have this attitude of acceptance. Right. And that doesn't mean that you think it's wonderful what people are doing or what you are doing, but it is like it is. That means acceptance means it is like it is. And there are good reasons for that. Mm -hmm. That's an explanation for things. Right. It's not an excuse. It's yep. an explanation. So that's the difference. And I think that's good. And of course, when you're always talking with your patients about DBT skills and so on and so on, of course, you also start to use these skills. Yes. And I think that's quite useful. Well, I know it's useful because a part of it was identifying the triggers. What's triggering you? And then now instead of reacting, you're going, whoa, that's a trigger. Get, get present and then what skill do we apply yeah. right either some cognitive behavioral ones where it's you know we got the negative thought is it a belief or a fact check your facts and um test it or let it go yeah um but then the next part i liked about that's where cbt start stopped in my opinion but what mm. dbt is now going how do i communicate that now so that mm. i can have my say that's respecting me and, and the other person. I never mm -hmm. had that vocabulary before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this vocabulary will also change your therapists. I tell you mm -hmm. when you're leading a team or when you're treating your patients or when you just, we are, therapists also are as head of department. We also have stressful events. That's clear. You also have sometimes distress. Mm -hmm. and use that skills and i think that's quite good well, maybe uh, it's not so hard to do that you know what i mean but it's good just well, to know how it feels to use the skills right but i think that's another great point not just adhd people and borderline personality people have these challenges everyone in the world does it's yes. just sometimes i think it has a lot to do with your environment but since we can feel emotions a lot quicker and bigger with ADHD is what I'm understanding from the science, but it has a lot to do with our past environment or where we are now. Um, we're not the only ones having emotional dysregulation yeah. challenges. Everyone does and everyone yeah. benefits from these skills. Yes. So I just want to make everyone sure to understand that just because we have ADHD doesn't mean we have all these problems. Everyone has problems just in different ways. That's right. Do you recommend CBT before DBT or DBT before CBT? That depends uh, answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really good. So, well, <laughs> well, I would say normally I I um, recommend DBT, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot of CBT in our department. Um, and we use, of course, CBT elements, as you already mentioned. And also these CBT treatment programs I have a lot of ADHD specific elements in, you know, yeah. but yeah, because of this acceptance thing, this explanation, not excuse, this mindfulness, emotion regulation, and um, this self-validating elements, which I think are very important. I recommend DBT first. Can you go a little more about the self-validating part? Because we never really got into that part. So we got validation of our emotions are real, but what's this self-validation that you're referring to? Well, yeah, that means that, of course, as a therapist, you can validate a patient, but you can also try to, to, to teach patients to self-validate because that means if you react in a specific way or if you are triggered, you can say, hey, stop. It's, well, my reaction is based on my biography, on my new biological variation, ADHD. But and it's 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 clear that I react in this way. I can validate myself. But now I think about how to, how to behave, how to react. You know what I mean? Yep. 
And I think that's very important. Yeah, and for me, I think that's a very good point. Like, I just wrote this down because I, I never really put these three together until you mentioned that. So the whole part of the self-validation part, I actually gained a lot more self-respect from myself, which gained more confidence. Then I started liking myself again. And yeah. I don't think a lot of us do that. That's right. So, yeah, Thank DBT you. worked well for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any final thoughts, uh, Alexandra? Because I, I, we really touched a lot of different points here. Uh, I think we point, we touched on every important part of DBT that I wanted to, that it's not an easy process, but it's a very important one. No matter ADHD, borderline, depression, no matter what, even if you think things are going well, it's still a great thing to learn because it's, it's a lot of mindfulness and present work and about you, which is not normal in today's world. Mm -hmm. So any final words on DBT? No, you have the final words. And I, I get totally the final agree. words. <laughs> and I totally agree. All right. How about this? The DBT is really good because it's validation and acceptance strategies, which has to do about changing skills and being non-judgmental. That's the big one. Non-judgmental about everyone else, but mainly non-judgmental about you. Because yes. with that comes self-validation, which means you gain self-respect and self-confidence, which means you start liking yourself again. And DBT is about unlearning your bad habits of the behaviors that were protecting you. Your brain's amazing. It creates scenarios or triggers to protect you. And we just got to get out of those bad habits. And DBT provides you an explanation, not an excuse, because of acceptance. Thank so, you for that. Thank you. Um, and the takeaway I want the listeners here is that DBT is all about learning skills that validates your feelings and to communicate your needs because your needs are important. You never thought for a while, was it? But it is. So, wow. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. I learned something pretty good today. So I appreciate your time. And to the listener, have you considered DBT? I would highly recommend it. So, Professor, thanks again for joining us. And to you, the listener. Yeah, no problem. And to you, the listener, thanks again for learning with me. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.